Now this is where the excitement happens. Hi, I'm Elaine from Food Bod Sourdough and in this video I would like to talk to you all about sourdough starters. We're going to be learning how to make a starter, how to look after a starter, how to use it, how to maintain it, everything that you need to know. Any issues to look out for, the best way to maintain it, everything that I can possibly impart to you, all of the tips and tricks and things that I do in my kitchen that I hope to impart onto you. So our sourdough starters, this is mine, this is my star. Our sourdough starters are the key to everything when it comes to making sourdough. They are what gives us the iconic texture and taste in a sourdough loaf. They are what lifts our dough. They are the absolute structure and mainstay of making sourdough. They're also our babies. <laughs> And when you have a sourdough starter, they very much become a part of your family. So they become very precious. So um, my cameraman, James, behind the camera is now looking at me like I'm an idiot. But they're very precious to us, our starters. So in this video, I hope to show you exactly how I keep mine this fit and healthy and fabulous. And this starter, this star, is the basis of everything. So in all my recipes, all my books, everything I do, this is where it all begins. So let's move on. I'm going to show you what you need for making a starter, where to begin, the process through the first seven days, and lots of other tips, looking at different flowers, as much information as I can give you all in one go. So. Let's make a starter. Sourdough starter is ostensibly flour and water. So the key things that we need to make a starter are flour and water. And all we're going to be doing is fermenting that flour and water to create our starter and give us that base for all of our loaves. So what I want to show you is the things that I use for making a starter. Uh, but what I will say very clearly at this point and throughout is this is a truly simple process. Making a sourdough starter, making sourdough is a truly simple process. So if you've been told or read anything to suggest it's anything more than that, please believe me, it's a lot simpler than you're thinking. So to make our starter, from the beginning, it's easier if you can get things organized. So I like to use glass jars for making a starter. I will always choose glass. You can use plastic, but with plastic, there's every chance that it may hold flavors uh, or colors from previous foods um, that may contaminate your starter. I like using glass as much because it's clean and simple, but also because then you can see the texture of your starter all the way through it, which I can promise you will bring you joy as this develops. So I use these jars, they are wet jars, they're 580 milliliters um, is the volume, and I like the fact that being that the shape of them means that we have quite a wide mouth to make it easier to work with. So these are what I choose to use. Um, if you've got a jar or something at home you want to use, just try and make sure that it's not much bigger than that. It's very easy to get lulled into this idea that you need to keep a lot of starter, but you really don't. So one of the things that you will notice about the way that I do things and I'm going to teach you to make this starter is about keeping it really lean. You don't need to keep a lot of starter, you don't need to waste a lot of flour and water. So with this, that's why I use this size jar. These jars come with a rubber seal and you don't need that. I just use the jar with the clips and the lid. So that's the first thing is your jar. Also, I use scales. 
One of the key things for me in keeping my starter healthy is to use equal weights of flour and water, not volume. So by using my scales, I can clearly and easily weigh out the amount of flour and water that I am putting into my starter and into my jar. So digital scales, absolutely brilliant. Flour. You can use many different types of flour for making a starter. Any wheat flour will work well, but ideally you want to use a strong flour. So what makes a flour strong is the protein level in the flour. So you may see a bag that says bread flour or strong white flour. Um, and these terms are referring to the protein content of the gluten in your flour. So that sounds more complicated than it is. An easy way to check that is to look at the bag. So in some countries, it will state on the front of the bag, bread flour, 13% protein. Um, in other countries, so like in the UK where I am, it doesn't state that on the front of the bag, but it will show the protein level in the nutritional value of the flour. So ideally, we're looking for a flour that is 12.5 to 13% protein. So on your nutritional table of the flour, if it says it's 12.5 grams of uh, protein per 100 grams of flour, uh, that's absolutely fine. In other countries, they show it per 30 grams. So it might say three grams of protein per 30 grams of flour. That's absolutely fine. If you can start this process and making your first starter with a good quality, strong white bread flour, it's a really easy way into this. Uh, you could also use a, a wholemeal or whole wheat flour. You could use a whole wheat spelt flour. There's lots of different ones you can use. As a starting point, I would either go with strong white bread flour or a whole grain flour, whole wheat or whole meal, depending what country you're in. When I first started making my starter, when I was introduced to making one, I was told to use uh, like a plain flour. In this country, we use plain flour to make cakes, things like that, and it only had 11% of protein. When I switched up to using the strong bread flour, it made all the difference. My starter behaved completely differently, was a much stronger character. So it's definitely worth investing in the strong flour. If you have a range of flowers in your kitchen um, or a range of different costs of flowers available, I would always invest in the best one for your starter because that is the mainstay of everything for your sourdough. So we've got our jar, our scales, our flour, water. It may sound crazy for me to say that you need to have particular water. You don't, it doesn't need to be blessed by the heavens, but you do need to keep in mind that the type of water that comes out your tap might affect your starter. So here, I can use water direct from my tap. It's not a problem. In some places, it can be quite heavily chlorinated, which starters don't particularly like. If that's the case, or you're not sure, fill a jug with water from your tap and let it sit on the side for 24 hours and the chlorine will evaporate. Alternatively, if you've got a filter, that's fine or you can boil and cool some water in readiness to use it. Um, for stirring your starter mixing, I use stainless steel spoons. It's absolutely fine. Again, I wouldn't use plastic or wood because they can have other flavours and foods ingrained in them. And this little thing here, this is my room thermometer. I have these all over my kitchen because what we'll talk about is how uh, weather and temperature affects making a starter. Again, it sounds more complicated than it is, but it really isn't. It's about how the cold slows things down and the heat speeds things up. And it's just worth having one because this will really help in understanding what your starter does, but it will also help as you start to make dough for you to be able to manage that in your kitchen. So room thermometer, the one I've got, will show what the temperatures have been across 24 hours as well, and that really helps. So we're set up, we've got everything ready to go, so let's get on and make a starter.